welcome, come in. Time for another lesson. Let's crack on and have a look, shall we? So tone-wise, I'm using a Strat, obviously. Bridge position. Mm. And I'm using the Zvex box of rock to give me the light breakup that you get, right? It's quite, it is almost a clean tone. You know? Quite clean, but when you play chords... I'm also using the Walrus Audio Julia. Uh, which is a great little chorus pedal, analog chorus pedal. And then for the solo. So Dirt supplied by the Stone Deaf FX Warp Drive, which is a great little distortion pedal. So the intro is pretty straightforward, it goes like this. So you're going to play 5-7 on the A string with that rhythm and you're going to play that five times and then a rest and you just keep going round. Alright, that's it. Straightforward enough. Next part's a little bit trickier, it goes like this. And then round again. Now what's key with this phrase is muting the strings that you're skipping over, okay? And there's a fair bit of skipping over because everything is banked around the 7th fret and the ninth fret on the G, right? So that's all you're playing on that string. 3, 4, 1... That's it, right? But then you've got the bass notes to contend with, right? So for the first phrase, I would play... I would use those fingers because my first finger there on the root... is just naturally muting the D string. And then I've got my second finger on the G. Seventh fret again. And there you, you want to... So I'm just pressing down on that note. Okay? Now both of those are muted, right? So when I play the... So I can be a little bit more loose with my right hand. So you only hear the 7th fret. But I'm actually strumming all three strings there. And it also adds a little bit to the percussiveness of the riff, right? So, slowly... first three notes is just downstrokes and then go into alternate picking okay then for the next phrase and there I generally would pull my thumb over the top just to mute the A string because you're just playing the open D So you can do that again. So it really allows you to unlock your wrist a bit. Okay, you might get a bit of extra noise in there, but you'll get more feel. Then your thumb's already in this position, but then you want to be playing the seventh fret on the low E. And there, I'm using my first finger to mute the uh, D string. I'm not fretting the seventh fret, with the tip of my finger there, I'm basically using sort of about there-ish on my finger because the tip of my finger then neatly dampens down the D string, right? And if I've got my thumb here playing the seventh fret on the E, which I want to ring out, a little bit of extra meat from my thumb is then muting the A string, right? You can get, you know, pretty strummy then. But after, as soon as I play there, my thumb comes off slightly. And now I'm able to mute those three strings, right? So you only hear the seventh fret again. And then 
just switch over to your second finger on the eighth fret and do the same thing. I think there is the meat from my second finger muting the um, A string and still my first finger muting the D. Um, and I think at the end of that it's actually rather than three. So you're going to play. Coming out of the verse, there's a slight variation in bars three and four. It goes like this. Like that, and then into the next bit. So from the third bar, we're just doing this. Okay, so same same first half, but you're gonna play just another three on the ninth fret there. And then you're gonna to go to this shape. And you play that arpeggiation. Like that. And you do two whacks at the end. But it'll be So you'll do that while you're moving down to the um, to the G chord, okay? So that's pretty straightforward. The um, chorus is lush, plays like this. And then the last time you play but if you can, you can get that in as well, right? Which I'm using my thumb there. And I'm using my little finger on the 10th fret. Chords are straightforward, it's just a G to a D. And a B minor to a C major 7. The only thing to be aware of is that, as usual, John mixes up loads of... Um, subtly different rhythmic variations. One of them is this. Okay, so that is just down, down, up, whack. And another whack, right? So it's three on the G, and then four down strokes on the um, D. Okay. Then for the B minor, so that's down, up, and a whack, and then you change. It's a tricky change actually because you've got to do seven, eight, nine, ten, but then your thumb over the top for the bass note. The other rhythmic variation is this, okay, and then. So just a subtle difference in the first bar, basically. So sometimes he leaves that hanging out for another another eighth note. Other times it's... Okay, so just mix that up a bit, and then the last time it's... So you cut that off there with a little rest and then you move to this chord. Or. Next part's cool, so staccato E. Three, four, one. Fluff that up a bit, but there we go. Straightforward enough though. Um, so you basically got an E minor, but you're only ever playing the second string to the fifth string, okay, here. So it goes for one bar, then down to a D, D major, then a B minor, then up to a C major, D major as a passing chord, right, then round again. And 
there's a couple of extra extensions, okay, which you'll have heard there. So the first bar is just straight. And the second bar, you'll go to the 12th fret with your little finger, okay? So you'll go. Okay, and there I'm muting the D string with a bit of my third finger there. Then down to the B minor. Okay, and again. You don't have to, you could just stay on that chord, right? But this is what he plays on the album. Then you go up a fret. And then up two frets with that major shape. Uh, next time round, you're going to play. Which is your second finger hitting the 13th fret on the B string. Down two frets and play the same as we did before. Down to the B minor. just played as before. There's an overdubbed part that outlines those chords as well which is cool um, and I'm using the um, chorus pedal for this. It's set to the this vibrato setting which is kind of a quite a warbly sort of tone really but uh, I think it works really well in this. Three, four, one. <laughs> And then round the next time, I think it plays, when it gets to the, um, the C, it goes like that. And then you're into the solo, right? So basically, flatten your first finger on the 12th fret there. And there's a tiny rest at the beginning. So you go three, four, one. So you're playing kind of two chord shapes there. One is that. Just the 12th fret. And then if you put your second finger and your fourth finger down on the B string and the G, then you play. So slowly it's three, four, one. Slide down to the 12th fret and then you're going to play a major shape there, which is. So once you, as your finger slides, your other two fingers get time to sort themselves out into their position, right? So you want to plant your first finger down first. And your second finger can catch up, right, if you can't do it quick enough. And then you put your little finger on the 12th fret and give a... Okay, and then your... You do another slide down from the 12th to the 9th, right? So that slowly is... Okay, and then when you're down here, you play... And then you slide back up, right? So that is slowly. Then you're in a major shape again. And then you go. You slide up for that last beat, okay? So that again, slowly. Um, the second time round, same again. All right, and I missed a few notes there, but hey, the effect covers up all manner of sins. So another benefit of having it in there. Then distortion on and we're into the solo, which goes like this. Right, it's pretty straightforward stuff. Bend on the fifth fret on the B. Okay, so you've got two bends and then just the 15th fret. 15th fret again at the end of the second bar. Twelfth fret on the B. Twelfth fret on the G. With that rhythm, right? Bend again, but then you go 17th fret and bend that up. 
and then a bend and release. That last part's just a hammer on. And then a slide to the 11th fret and then the 14th fret on this next string down. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed that one. Thank you very much indeed for watching. See you again soon. Cheers. Bye bye.